Hello there, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron for using the Pax Britannica, an Imperial Timeline mod for, of course, the game. But we're playing as Mexico, led by Augustin the Fourth. So we're currently at the time of this recording, Mexico is not 100% done. There's some stuff here to do. So we have about four to five years of content. Um, we can reunite the Empire, deal with the April Crisis, and stick with the Emperor. And if you wonder about the situation of Mexico, please go right ahead. And the Mexican, the, the Mexican Empire is a vestigial, a vestigial, vestigial Empire. I can't read. But, uh, disable, uh, disable for now. Very important. Um, it's fine. Leave as is. Uh, we're going to read about the sick man of America. The Empire of Mexico is a show of its former self. Its economy, military, and its general prestige has been a state of a rapid decline. Few can recall a day when they were proud to be Mexican, and few can say they welcomed the Emperor with open arms. It's the upcoming national election in April. Many within the Junta fear a Jacobin takeover and such an outcome occur. Then Mexico's short taste of democracy, no matter how flawed, will come to a crashing halt. Mexico days are numbered, and if she plans for a billion or empire bowl, she only did one heck of a miracle. Addressing the uh, issue of banditry. Oh boy. The April Crisis. Oh god. Oh, I want to do this one. Give more political power. You lose some stability, though. Well, in the April Crisis, other more democratically aligned individuals have been siding with the uh, Frente Unido Mexicano or the Partido Socialista Mexicano. If we continue to let such actions slide, we may face a bureaucratic board of educated persons within the Junta. By enforcing or intimidating these ministers, we can ensure that these nations have full support of these ministers at the very least, although many may not take kindly to such extreme actions. So, in the meantime, uh, within the national spirit, a vestigial empire, not good, not good. We have a suspended, a suspended constitution, which is not good either. And then we also have a legacy of 1878, which is probably not very good either. So, um, in the meantime, I do know that as Mexico, you can jump around and take over uh, another nations, but you know, Corpus Christi, huh? How big is Corpus Christi? Is she pretty large? Pretty large girl? No? Oh, I guess. La uh, uh, Apache Confederation. So, cool. Mexico is definitely a shell of its former self. Um, but we'll see what happens. We're, we have 18 combo with, with infantry, and then we have horses here for some reason, and the 12 combo with. So. Should be alright. Not a lot of manpower. We need way... Oh my god, we need so many guns and rations. Rations are pretty easy to make overall, but guns are another issue. We have two divisions. We're not making any more divisions. We can't afford to make any more divisions, but let's at least have the divisions that we currently have to be okay. Um, what do we have? Cabinet... Oh god. 0.69 political power every day. Jesus Christ. A revanchism, huh? Oh, I like that. Ah. Uh, the flame of the Far East is lit. Nice. Oh, April Crisis. As predict, oh, well, I guess we'll read this one first. Uh, as election results have important in the Junta's suspicion of a Jacobin electoral victory has been validated, as the last of the ballots were counted, the military already began making moves to secure government departments of vital importance. Jacobin political leaders were arrested en masse, and only a handful of Democratic governors and members of the government were allowed to stay in the position of power. The April crisis that had many feared coming is now well underway, as the things getting worse. <laughs> as predicted by the ruling Junta, uh, the Frente Unido Mexicano has defeated. All political opposition in a major landslide victory, however. To much surprise from the Mexican population, the Junta and Augustin IV have jointly banned and declared the Frente Unido Mexicano as a foreign sponsor terrorist organization pointing the blame to none other than Japan. When Tokyo's rejected any idea of conducting any sort of subversive, subversive activities against Mexico, the fabricated claim from the Junta was more than enough to see the vote from the Jacobin Party no longer considered accurate. As a sort of the sudden pressure or measure, Mexico's so called empire now entered a, a stage of political violence never seen before seen yet. Oh, good God. Oh, good. Ban a lot of part. Oh, God. Oh, this course. Oh, God. Road to Revolution. Useful idiots. This but uh, Unleash the gold shirts. Add a despotist party to the ruling coalition. Europe. European railway strike. Calm everyone the heck down. Um, uh, probably more loyalty. Address the banditry issue. We have, like, no stability. Much of the North lay subject to the ruling bandits, which had caused large loss of political support from the region, and it's likely why the Mexican Revolutionary Committee was able to gain such a foothold over there in comparison to other states. Most of Washington's lands have such room and restore imperial rule, we wish to avoid an all-out civil war. Oh god. The Empire of Mexico is on its last legs, and if the situation is resolved soon, then we may face civil war yet worse yet, with the complete chaos in the Mexican nation. With the Jacobin electoral victory declared null, the Empire of Mexico is seemingly on its last legs. Both August and the Fourth and the Junta rallied the military to their anti-democratic cause, and the long-awaited fight for the heart of the nation has now commenced. The Empire has completely uh, upturned the monarchist political monopoly, and it seems Mexico is bleeding towards a path of revolution, only violent and a hardline stance against these opposing political forces could put an end to the nation's worst crisis ever. Even if the military is able to quell the unrest it faces, Mexico will forever be changed. The loyalty of its states and peoples will be questioned, likely until the end of time. Only God can save this backwards nation. Subversive, huh? 
So Mexico City is pretty good. They're loyal. So let's do the disloyal one. Oaxaca? I never know how to pronounce that word. Let's at least get the ones that are disloyal on our side. Because here it says what? Where there is a difference, there is dissidence. We must unite the entirety of Mexico. We are to see the rising sun of this great nation. Oh boy. We get no political power. Holy crap. All states loyalty plus 2%. And get more political power. Jacobin assassinated. Because right now we are... Despotism. August in the 4th. Partido Nacional de Rejuvenzimiento Mexicano. Jack Ben Sassnade. <coughs> Much uproar in the poor city of Puerto Vallarta today. Because last night influential Jacobin politician Daniel Pardo was assassinated in a bar after getting drunk and getting in a heated argument with some conservative gentlemen about the California Republic. Daniel Pardo believed Mexico and California should unify and control the Zapat Zapatista peacefully, which also uh, drunk conservatives highly disagreed with and argued instead that the nations should go to war once more and unify under the stronger rule of Mexico. After a small brawl, one of the gentlemen shot the Jacobin and fled the scene. The kid had not been caught, but the police had talked to some of the friends who were there within, with the murder. Occur. Par uh, Daniel Pardi Pardo will be buried in his family's grave at the home of Col me Colima. A blur of the Jacobins. Chiapas. Um, Yolisco. And... Tam Tam Alipas. Calm everyone down. Okay, so it's going up and down, maybe. Despite having a pool of capable ministers, many are too risky to be granted a place within a government. So we should draw from our seemingly bloated list of loyal political members. This they may not be the smartest, most able of ministers, but they surely are stupidly faithful. Sometimes you gotta have stupidly faithful people, man. No change, huh? That sucks. Well, minus 0.25 kind of sucks. Yeah, not great for us. Patriarchal Society, sign me up. What is this? State Control Press. Secret Police. Basic Health Care. 18 hour workday, holy crap. No state Welfare. Fully Westernized. Market Panic, that's not good. Semi Industrialized. Rampant Poverty. Well, at least we got people here. Probably grab Mr. Defense over here. Organization's always good too. 0 0.3. 0 0.3. Yeah. Addressing increased bandit activity. Police arrests are ramping up throughout the whole country. Uh, who's, uh, <clears throat> these last few months. Mostly having to do with the illegal sale of production of beer and alcoholic drinks. Oh, crap. It mostly seems harmless until a certain point, which is uh, when the police arrested a well known and wanted bandit leader. He was captured alongside some workers in what seemed assumed to be an abandoned mine producing illegal beer. After his capture, the police began to wonder whether any of the other big ga bandit gangs in Mexico might have been involved in the whole alcohol crisis. His suspicions were confirmed when the arrests started piling up again, which again included various members of the various bandit gangs. With this revelation, the government had become rather worried about the safety of the citizens and the stability of the nation. Not sure whether the plan of action should be next. Things are heating up. Oh. Well, that's a little better than before. We're on the bandits. It's official. The government is fed up. In a message in the press, the government stated that Oh, that the bandits have crossed the final line. They now have officially declared war on the bandits, meaning that they will do everything in their power to fight these drunken scum, backwards terrorists, and corrupt monsters. Clearly, the de declaration of war with a renewed budget for the police, army, and border garrisons. From now on, every person crossing any border will be checked. No more loose ends. The police will also more easily be able to intrude on people's privacy and private property, which is slightly worrying to the public, who haven't been calmed yet. The government is hoping that the combination of these measures will eventually sometime soon Mexico will be rid of these uh, horrors. Yeah, probably. Hopefully. We still have no political power, god dang it. Well, at least we have slightly more stability. Which gave us point one more political power, which is nice, but still. All states loyalty goes down by 2%. Oh, that's not good. Um, God, this kind of sucks. These are idiots. Uh, more stability? Yes. Crossing up empire, millions have banded together to oppose the emperor and his clique of military officials. Individuals once politically opposed have found some common ground in the fervent opposition for the government. But plans are made on how to isolate these political threats, and all heck may break loose. The best course of action is to propose immediate political reform to remove any local corrupt rulers and replace them with more amicable and capable persons. La Banda de Neptuno. Drugs, booze, and psychedelic modes. Uh, La Banda de Neptuno has it all. La Banda de Neptuno, or the band from Neptune, is up and coming Mexican band who mostly plays in clubs and festivals. They're all the rage with the kids who think the band's music makes them feel free and makes them think about themselves and life more thoroughly. This newfound freedom has inspired many teens to start writing their own lyrics or create their own music. They also like very much for their deep meaning lyrics, though most of the older folk will blame this on the drugs. The psychedelia and avant-garde fields of the band have attracted many people to go to their own concerts and buy their records. 
They have announced a tour of all of Mexico and are happy with the attention. The band has also stated that the newfound funds they want to innovate even more on the future records. Some say this is the beginning of a new era for music, and while well, others are more skeptical, whether you might think about them, they are staying. Go on, run to the Yankees. Or Yankees. Well, that sucks. We're trying to make some civvies, and I think we made one already, but still. Not looking good for us, man. How, how much are we out? 8,000 guns, 1,200 motorized equipment, 3,600 infantry rations. My god. No, we have no planes. Actually, do we have any air force? We gotta check on this one. Here, shove them together and just train. What do we have? Fighters. Oh, we actually have cast. That's different. Nice. Still disloyal, huh? At least it's gold shirts. Are the, they're the militia branch of the Mexican Neo Imperialist Party, led by Gustavo Salian uh, de Sicilia. While the parties remain neutral to the affairs of the monarchy, it's all by definition superficially anti Jacobin, so much so that they've become a seemingly necessary tool for us to rely upon them. You're upon uh, strikes. Due to heavy rainfall, worthless wages, and general spite for the jobs in Boston, railway construction workers, decided to go on strike and set a small revolt just after their lunch breaks. At that time in the day, about 9 millimeters of rain had fallen, making it almost impossible to properly construct the railway, but the boss decided it was fine and told them to keep working. They didn't start a protest, and it was pretty peaceful to begin with until one member broke mentally and punched one of the higher ups who were present. At the moment, all heck broke loose. Some of the higher ups started shooting at the dozens of the railway workers. As chaos continued until 10 of the workers were either dead or shot or hit in the head with a tool. Despite all this, the railway workers returned later that day to fulfill the quota. Still utterly wet. That'll teach them. There goes all that political power we had. God dang it. Um. We gotta get that despotism up higher. Well, let's just use this one for now. Chiapas. Kinda sucks for us. And everyone can calm the heck down. Despite the actions of the Junta and its handling of the situation, there's still a large pool of opposition to be found, primarily in the North. By conducting one fell swoop with local military garrisons, we may be able to root out all the problems before it's overstates its welcome. Although it's a chance that the military, as loyal as it is, may be unable to produce any substantial records. Or results, I guess, per se. Via de Cristal Raid. It's called 9, about 3 degrees Celsius. Wasn't much going on around here. The last ride of Via de Cristal. They had no idea what was coming. Are you already moving in Squad 1? Over. We're already moving, Commander. Over. Good, Squad 1. Moving on, my Commander. Over. Alright, moving in, Squad 1. The doors busted open. The loud bangs. The troops in Squad 1 moving in to secure the villa. Uh, the gangsters, overwhelmed by the troops, he took either to cover or were shot or started shooting back. It was a real shootout fest. And then everyone thing calmed down. Was everyone dead? No. Quite the contrary. It seemed Squad 1 had come out victorious with only losing a single soldier. They quickly arrested any remaining gangsters and started to secure the rest of the villa. The troops were the rooms were either empty or wrapped with bullets. That was until they made it to the garage. Cocaine, cocaine everywhere. Must have been about 500 kilos of pure cocaine, all neatly packed and ready for shipping. A victory for the government. Beat a confession out of him and shoot him. Call Major General Bloken. Bloken. Well, at least we got more political power, I guess. 8.24 is better than nothing, I guess. Um, if that's the case, occupy territory. Oh, we can't do that. Collaborations. Act of Thorns. Order Coaquilla, Durango, Chihuahua, and Sonora. Trial of Damiana Ruoco. Ruoco. Century proclamation. What will we get there? Because we literally have no political power. Last July, late at night in a bar in Tampico, three bodies were found by a lady working in the back of the bar. She discovered the bodies after hearing some kerfuffle coming from the main saloon hall. She sadly wasn't able to meet, <clears throat> see the criminal, nor was gateway. And the bar where she entered, she was also another, there was another man who said he was robbing the register. But we, they quickly called the cops who arrived to question them. After some talking with the cops, it was decided to launch an official investigation to, into the case. However, while they were talking, uh, one of the men who was shot made some noise, and it turned out one of them hadn't died. He was rushed to the hospital, and being able to barely see, was asked to point to someone who vaguely looked like a culprit. Meanwhile, on the other side of town, Damien Oruoco had just arrived to fight in a boxing match against Jose Manuel Salian. Damian Rocco is a black boxer who lived in San Luis Postoy and is coming to get a spot in the National Boxing Championship. A few days later, when the case was made more public, a man stepped forward with some info, Victor Balderas. He claimed to have seen the culprits drive away from the bar uh, with San Luis Poyos, uh, Potosi license plates, and thus the police investigated the whole town for people from that region and found Damian Rocco's car. He matched the description given by the wounded man, Victor Balderas, and several other witnesses who came forward, although Damian was at the time of the crime. With some friends in a restaurant, no one from the restaurant had confirmed this, and the police believed those friends were more likely fellow culprits. Thus, Damien was arrested, and his friends were nowhere to be seen. Seeing as the evidence wasn't fully solid, he was put on a trial, and after a very tense trial, in which his race and boxing skills were brought in as evidence against him, he was sentenced to death for a double homicide. Whether it was a fair trial, is and still will always be up for debate. It's good that the anti-church violence has ended. This worst part, give more some political power at the very least, I guess. 
The Veracruz Arrest, a, a large cargo ship, are on the Veracruz Harbor this morning. They come from several locations, including Germany, British, West Africa, and Grand Colombia. After the government declared war on the bandits, they have invested heavily into the training military personnel to keep an eye on imports in the biggest harbors. So, when a bandit member tried to bribe a dock worker to smuggle drugs into Mexico, he not obliged and instead caught up on the on-duty military personnel to deal with it. Although something like this has happened before, this time, we will, for some reason, the person who tried to bribe the dock worker wasn't alone. It was with some influential members of the Moreta of Bandit Gang. They were all subsequently arrested and will be put on trial. Whether the influential members were, were set up by the Maratha Bandit leader is unknown, but it might have been a way for him to get rid of the most powerful figures and non-trustworthy members, although this is still up for investigation. About 500 million pesos worth of drugs have been seized and destroyed. After uh, the news, many people congratulated the government on the good job. All in one city? Apparently. Oh. Order has been long been unruly. It's time we change the state and affairs and restore order to the affected regions permanently. Oh, Jesus. How am I supposed to do that without political power? Century Proclamation. After months of political turmoil, Mexico has finally returned to some sense of stability. August in the 4th, in the street of Mexico had announced a new century for the Empire of Mexico. One centered around the rapid expansion of the nation's economy, military, and territories. Whilst few criticisms could be heard from the crowd of spectators, most of the Emperor's audience cheered in patriotic delight. The Junta, too, confirmed that the claims made by the Emperor and once up for the Empire's lifetime. Everything looks to be going to plan, at least for now. Hopefully, at least. Oh, now they even just all down there, too. God dang it. Look at it. Restore order. Bandit leader captured after the arrest of Oscar Marato. Victor Marato and the lawyer Antonio Zaragoza and Vercuz not too long ago, the police launched an official investigation into why they were present at the trial. Or the deal, I mean. The question had already been finished up, and the convicts were willing to give up some information about the head of the Morato bandit gang. Uh, they are also willing to give the location of the headquarters of the bandits for a shorter prison sentence. The government accepted the deal and it started an operation. The operation took place last night, and it was a big success. The head of the bandit gang, Sergei Morato, and other influential members have been arrested and put into jail. The bandit gang was mostly situated throughout the state of Sonora and had bribed many pol policemen to keep it a secret. The rest would be one of the biggest hits to the Mexican and Colombian bandits. One down, many to go. Nice. 30 days, north has been unruly, time to change the state of affairs and restore order to the affected regions permanently. Empire eternal, more than 35%. Oh god. Nationalist symbol. Oh, they actually get people here, that'd be nice. But our finest hour. Oh. Well, it sounds like we're going to take a long time to get to this one. Emperor uh, Augustine has managed beyond all belief to crush a revolutionary Jacobin threat that has plagued Mexico for over two decades. While red banners still fly high on the Empire's furthest most corners, if not all the major urban centers, have pledged your unquestionable loyalty to the Eturbide dynasty. Now it's time for Mexico to look to her future and claim back what was rightfully stolen from her. The north not good. I'd like to do this, but we just don't have enough political power for this. Oh, oh, we can do this one now. Oh, okay. Well, at least we have a decent amount of political power, I suppose. Um, so this one, New Mexican Army, restore the academia, the Hispanic workhorse. Cool. New Mexican Army's down here. Who get a research slot? Restore the academia. Nice. And another research slot. Hispanic workhorse. Another research slot. Wow. Really the effectiveness of state focuses. Ooh. Well, it's not bad. Halt the brain drain. So you can silence the reformists. Every state that is low gain 10 army XP. And renovate the Veracruz shipping board. That's pretty decent. And deal from the sky. Or death from the skies. That's not bad either. Or a doctrinal evolution. We improve by a large amount, by a small amount. More defense, more attack. But lose politically connected and gains paranoid for three years, which is fine, whatever. Oh, but you get speed here. I don't want speed. Heaven's first finest flyers. But you get nothing but the navy. And we get some navy stuff here, but it's not much. Honestly, I'm going to do a doctrinal evolution, maybe. So you can invite foreign industrialists. Power industrialization will get better. Uh, versus nationalization efforts. Begin to improve by a large amount. Huh. Automation rush. 
laissez faire with the state capitalism and little big Mexico. Interesting, interesting, interesting. There's a prioritize local talent and the corporate state. National efforts with the corporate state. Way more research efficiency gain. State capital with mixed market. Closed economy. And Hispanic workers. Final struggle. Reunite imperial fervor. It's not necessarily bad too to do. It's not bad either. Um, foreign industrialists. Doctrinal evolution. Nationalization. Huh. Because they definitely want to get down here. Get a research slot. But I also want to get down here too. Get more stability. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe do nationalization. That part of Mexico remained the economic whip of the world's greatest powers, and the worst of these being the Great Britain. As some reverse the strain on our uh, stain on our nation and reclaim it, uh, all the foreign industrial sectors for the betterment of the people, our nation and its proud peoples. Get some stability no matter what, so that's pretty good. Get some political power there too. Which we could honestly use it too. Um. Wait, what? We already caught it, though. So we don't need to do that one now. Coahulia? That's not very high, is it? Uh, Chihuahua is 12%. 15, 12, and then Sonora is 5. Well, I really want to do this one, but I'll say slowly to go up by quite a bit. Um, get a little bit more stability, which would be nice. More despotism, which is good. And we'll get more political power in general because we'll get rid of all these cabinet crises. We'll get 8% more political power. We, you know what? I'm going to wait. Let's do Alicia Gold shirts. Let's see what happens. I don't know. Hey, we'll get one more for one a day. That's good. Um, evolution. You, get, you don't get any political power there, which is what I really want. Economic health improves. Corporate state. Doesn't help you with political power, though. I'm looking really looking for PP. Stamp down defeatism. The Mexican spirit has seen better days. War, economic stagnation, political unrest, following living standards, and the threat of revolution have all played their part in poisoning the soul of this once great nation. Time has come for the government to invest heavily in the propaganda to lift the spirits of the Mexico, Mexican people. There should not be a street corner without a Mexican flag, nor one without a proud patriot. We are so far behind, it's not funny. Probably best to do that one next. Active state cap focus focus cap increased by one. Huh? Halt the brain drain. Store academia. I mean, we could rush to get another research slot. That would probably be very good too. But I like this one quite a bit. Get ten percent more stability too. We could really use it. Current economic health began to improve by a small amount. I don't want to lose any more stability. I'll just go this way. Prior to his local town. While well, the nation's brain drain has expelled much of the upper middle class, there are some that remain within the nation that have both the funds and intellect to kickstart new civilian industries in the country. Some government programs to kickstart this much needed potential uh, economic boom is just a thing Mexican people and the nation need to get the ball rolling. Why not? Oh, Durango's currently below now. 
But Durango should be okay still. Yeah, they're still core state, so. Should be okay. Hey, we're doing better at rations. Guns, though, not so much. Planes. Kharkiv? Durango. Well, we have to wait for that. Sonora. Kind of don't want to spend any political power just yet. Local talent. Nothing there. Gold shirts again? Now, can these guys coo us? Are they too high? They sound, feels like, I feels like they can, maybe. They probably can. Hispanic workforce. The Empire of Mexico has proven a global economic analyst is wrong. Many said the economic future of our nation was bleak at best, and even more fooled themselves that Mexican bankruptcy was all but guaranteed. But thanks to a cable and dedicated pool of bankers and ministers, Mexico had found its back stronger than ever before. Nice. And get 10% more stability, which I do want. Great Balkan War, nice. Keep doing that state, why not? Corporate state. We could, or we could just halt the brain drain first. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of eager officers willing to aid the development of our military. Let us collect these great minds, give them their own dedicated headquarters so that they can best aid our nation in times of war. Cool. I'll probably get some of that too. Less than half, huh? Twenty five percent still there, huh? Oh, nice. I really wonder if we can get cooed. I mean, we're in a coalition, why not? They could leave the coalition, but still. Hispanic order colors. We're gonna have some monarchy. Get more tax. Nice. Still an economy, huh? State capitalism. Nice. Oh, yeah, let's get another one, finally. Support commitment. Well, I'll need that eventually, too. Restore the academia. Despite our best efforts to halt the fleeting, fleeing of Mexican intellectuals, a new problem has arisen. Men who refuse to partake in the political process of the nation of any major industrial sectors out of fear. Families of middle-class Mexicans, even some elites, have taken their laborers' jobs to avoid the eye of Mexico. While incentivizing and reassuring such people that they are of no interest to the government, we may be able to convince them to join and expand Mexico's lacking education sector. Nice. Doesn't really matter to me too much. Still 25% off. It's not good. Did we get cooed yet? 25%. Durango's still okay though. 25%. I'm sure that academia. Um, it's not bad. I'll only one two. You can really start building things faster. So let's do one on the inside one. Let's do the inside one too. Doctrinal evolution. The Mexican army has entered a stage of doctrine or uh, regression. Many officers are either corrupt, stupid, or both, and have no interest to expand the nation's military mind. They instead see trench warfare as the only means of conducting modern warfare, and are rejecting any ideas of adopting or implementing any new technologies or strategical uh, strategic ideas. It's time we change this. Nice. Okay, fine. Edit divisions. That'd be nice. No more reason. Twenty percent for Coahuila. Man, I cannot pronounce anything here, can I? I don't know Spanish, man. I'm sorry. I ain't knowing Spanish.
I wonder if we can't get good. Hey, there you go. Better R, yes, please. Percent. The heavens, uh, finest flies. The Great War proved one thing is that the battle for the heavens will undoubtedly ship the tide of battle for all of history. While traditional ground troop formations will still do a sound job against technically inferior enemies, the same cannot be said for many of our neighbors up north. If planning or claiming we lost the empire, we best be prepared on all possible fronts. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get cooed. Nice. 1.2 every day, not bad. Hello, you done training? No, you're not. Oh. There you go. You'll finish repairing soon. Oh, uh, we're getting closer. Nice. New Mexican Army. <clears throat> Mexico's military remained at the forefront of our enemy slots. From what once more a mere collection of wandering fools, now is the world's most developed and feared armies. The first of many steps have been taken in the name of reclaiming our lo lost nation's glory. Nation's lost glory. Uh, Reignite imperial fervor. If we plan on reclaiming our lost empire, then every man and woman uh, must just dedicate themselves to the upcoming war. Factories must be filled and weapons must be made if we truly wish to rid. Uh, uh, be rid. The rid this world of all those who have attempted to steer our nation away from a God-given right to empire. Officers League. Nice. Final struggle. It's a duty of every Mexican to serve that state's needs in any and every capacity. Our nation will soon embark on its greatest struggle yet. We can only rely on ourselves to achieve this seemingly unachievable. Many fathers, sons, and brothers will die on the way, but every sacrifice made will be a step closer to claiming our nation's lost glory. Twenty-eight does drop twenty-six. Corporate state. A handful of Mexican companies have obtained record profits thanks to the government's extensive nationalization efforts. With the majority of state companies are being primarily centered around the extraction of Mexico's vast raw resources. By empowering the nation's top economic uh, performers, we can achieve the idealistic dream of self reliant industrial superpower. New military academy, huh? Our finest hour, eventually, too, then. Oh, we need. Ooh. Oh, we can do it! Yay! We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Our finest hour. Mexico now stands at a crossroad. Does it reclaim its former glory as a major power on uh, North American continent? Or does it bend to the might of others? We need to believe that now is the time that we will take what is rightfully ours. No more compromises, no more treaties. Mexico shall be whole. We get war economy. Just straight go to war economy. Oh. You could tell border skirmish. We're going to need more divisions then if we want to do that. Well, we don't have we don't have the manpower for it. Okay. Very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Oh, Britain wins orbit wars. Good job, Britain. I guess I don't think anyone's really competing, but whatever. Good job, no matter what. Oh, we need to get more research speed too. More golden shirts. It looks like we're probably gonna need them. And then Chihuahua and Sonora, but Sonora's gonna be such a pain in the butt. Oh my god. Command power. Nice. Available to theorist. 10% more uh, war support? Nice. New Mexican Army. Well, I definitely want to do this one, but... So, it's California Republic, North Mexican... Northern Mexican Coalition. Oh, that's going to be a lot. The above countries will be, will be aware of aggressive military posturing will form defensive alliances around us. Well, let's go to here first. And I'll get a fifth research slot. Oh, lovely. Establish your officers, of course. Find a pro-monarchist cells. Ooh. There's still those within the Northern Republics that wish to see the return of the Itibird, Iturbide dynasty. If we to fund these possible insurgents in some way, then we could see a spike of political violence within these hostile nations. So the Chevrolet would go a long way in aiding us, or should war arise with the state nations? Independence, Union, or Religion. The Empire of Mexico was founded on three core national pillars after the country's hard fought independence against Spain, those being independence, union, and religion. Well, those tenants have and will continue to form a common national identity within our nation. That should see the Northern Republics and many remaining dissenters easily match with a wider Mexican society in due time. Oh, oh it's good. Heirs of Aztlan. Oh! Our nation sits in the heartland of the old Aztec Empire. 
one if not of the most developed uh, ancient powers from centuries before. Well, maybe if I began to stamp, there would be much to gain politically if we idealized this once formidable, formidable power. And then small scale naval developments. The Mexican naval will always be remaining an afterthought, so why bother expanding government money for a sector of the military that would never be able to play catch up with the rest of the world? Instead, we should focus on the naval budget developing small naval craft for the defense of the nation's shores and new military academy. After much delay, a bunch of cuts and protests by the local Toluca Military Academy has finally been built and begun under the immediate use. Many of the locals objected to the construction of the academy, but many believe also greatly welcome the academy. They believe it will bring more prosperity to the region, as new soldiers have to spend their days here training. Especially local police chief Mario Murillo, who was enthusiastic about the coming of the academy as he believes the greatest thing to do is to serve in the army. Head of the academy is Captain Juan Tassis, a strict and disciplined army veteran who wants to prepare the next generation for the war. Good for the young folk, but we're going to end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we try to manage the military. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day!